Shalom everyone. Olam Haba, the story of afterlife. What exactly happened after we bury our loved one? There is a great writings in the literature and in the canon in the Tanakh tremendous amount of sources about the afterlife. But if we zoom in in our Torah, and we are very close to the festival of giving of the Torah, Chag HaShavuot, in the five books of Moses there is no one single source that speaks about Olam Abba, afterlife. So if one asks us, can you prove from our Torah that there is an afterlife? So before we answer that, let's think together. In every one of the main world religions, let's say it's about nine world religions, there is a common sense that all speaks about punishment and reward. Punishment rewards has to be something to do with afterlife because, as we discussed many times, there are righteous, we know, that totally live in a miserable life and suffering. And there are those who are, appear to be wicked and they live a great materialistic life. So we do believe that there is a heavenly tribunal and is the afterlife. And as we said in the Tanakh, there are sources. Take, for example, the story of King David. When he approached Abigail, the wife of Naval HaKarmeli, she comforted King David and she said something, you see it in the many Jewish cemeteries on the monument, Tehe Nishmato Tzrura B'Tzrua Chaim the abbreviation of Taf Nun Tzadik Bet Hei, which is a reference to afterlife. Or if you go further, you can bring a source for King Saul, the first Jewish king. Very end of his life, he, again by force of circumstance, called upon a medium, a psychic, and he asked her to bring here the soul of the prophet Samuel, which he did, and as a result it was a communication, incongruous, not really proper, uncanny, but still it is a source of reference from the Tanakh to afterlives. So what happened to our Torah? The answer starts with the Torah portion of the Chukotai that we read the previous week in the Bechukotai, which is a short, beautiful portion, there are series of blessings and curses. Thirteen blessings, thirteen verses that speaks about tremendous blessings, the Almighty promise to those who follow. And then there are thirty verses of curses. How come? Our rabbis explain to us in numerous places that the blessings are abundance. The list is just a selected list that shows some examples. Because if you look at the Hebrew letters, Aleph and Taf, the 22 Hebrew letters that starts with the Aleph and the Taf, the portion of blessings in Bechuko Tai Telechu start with Aleph and finish with Taf, Komemuyut, Taf, which means God saying that I incorporated all the blessings together. And here are some examples 13 verses of blessings. Then there are 30 verses of admonition, of curses. 
But the beauty of that is the Almighty God, Heavenly Father, who loves all of His creatures, as the Creator, gives us an opportunity all the time to change. In a way, it's like, imagine you go to the Disney World. Those of you who saw Universal Studios, there are different stations, different games, and there are a lot of exits. If you feel some type of uncomfortable or trepidation in a certain act or certain parts, you can have an exit. In that sense, for our obviously different world of spirituality, the Almighty in His great compassion and mercy give us a hint in each and every stage that gives us some type of opportunity to express contrition and remorse and escape from crisis. When you see at the first stage, let's say, unprecedented sudden sicknesses, which obviously a person created for themselves, by themselves, by their own actions, then gently we understand that the Creator is insinuating is alluding to us that something is not right and give us a chance to change for better. So it's not a series of punishment and admonition that goes in its most severe way. It's a stages, seven stages. The worst is something that we experience twice, which is the expulsion, Geirush, the taking away our people from our land. So with that said, we getting the understanding what Judaism is all about and what's the real difference, at least in a sense of understanding the afterlife question, between Jewish faith and other faith. Unlike other faith group that put a tremendous emphasis on paradise, on afterlife, Judaism believes in what we chant together on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Hayom, 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 meaning today. Judaism believe in the action of a person in this life, in this world. Lo hametim yehalelu ya velo kol yordei duma meaning those who are no longer among the living, as much as they can gain in our language their retirement, they see a continuation or they see a consequences, but they cannot actively change the world for better. We, the living, have the golden opportunity to make the world a better place to live. So in the face of crisis, in the face of evil, when we see something happen in Buffalo, how a person went ahead and killed innocent people in the supermarket just because of their skin color, or another 18 years old young man went to school in Texas and killed almost 20 innocent children third, fourth graders, without compassion, without any consideration to anything, try to comprehend the feeling of the parents, other children worldwide, the idea of the priority or changing the priorities, what needs to be done, we have a special call at this time. We can be the people who bestow the blessing to the world. How we do that? By following the beautiful formula 
that our ancient sages gave us. Tshuva, Tfila, Tzedaka. Meaning, try to do a self-search and improve our lives. Try to put more emphasis on the sincerity of prayer and believe in the power of prayer. And Tzedaka, we explain many times, Tzedaka can be cash, helping, but Tzedaka can be sharing our talents and qualities, or by speaking up and expressing our sincere concern and showing the world that we are the people who take responsibility and others will follow. Taking responsibility, taking actions, meaning trying to rectify the broken world. And let's face it, we are in the broken world between the Ukraine and Russia to Taiwan and China, between the healthcare system to the gas prices here, between the relationship in the world of education between parents and children and educators, the situation overall in the world, tension and economy and more. There is so much to do if one sincerely take responsibility and do something. And do something meaning something very positive. Improving the tikkun olam, helping each other, helping to make the world a better place to live. Doing the blessings, bringing blessings to our lives and the lives of others. Responsibilities can be fighting to have a better security, fighting all these unprecedented evil, but also it's getting close to God, following our Bible, our Torah, and its mitzvot and its commandments, following the very clear instruction of a proper lives that the Almighty God gave all of us. Wish you all Shabbat Shalom and Chag Shavuot Sameach. May the Almighty God brings the Rosh Hashanah for the Torah, the giving of the commandments and mitzvot to all of us. Help us of Tikkun Olam to improve the world and make our world and the whole people of the world, all God creatures, a better place to live. Amen.